Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And in this video, we are going to have a look how you can run the Azure application services or app services on any infrastructure, on premises or at other cloud provider. So you can keep building your cloud native apps as you would run them in Azure, but also in all other environments. We just announced the latest addition to the Azure Arc family, and this is application services. Now think about the scenario where you build these cloud native applications and you use Azure Pass services such as web apps, serverless with functions or logic apps and many, many more. And you build that application and it runs in Azure, but you also have scenarios where you want to use the same application and you need to deploy it maybe in on your on-premises environment in your local data center or at your edge location like branch offices factories retail stores and many many others or in other cases you probably want to use the same architectures and the same services but run it in an other cloud provider now with azure arc enabled app services or application services you can do that right now and before we actually dive into this, I want to quickly give you a little bit of an overview of what Azure Arc can do. Azure Arc is a service we announced uh, already a couple of months or even years ago, uh, which allows you to actually build these hybrid and multi-cloud scenarios and provide you with that single control plane. So what does that mean? We are actually extending the Azure control plane, meaning Azure Resource Manager and the management services, uh, to basically resources which are outside of Azure. Before you were only able to actually really manage Azure resources. Now we, with Azure Arc, we can manage resources which are outside of Azure. And we'll basically allow you to do two things here. So the one is Azure Arc enabled infrastructure. This allows you to actually connect existing infrastructure, such as servers, Linux and Windows servers, physical and virtual servers to the Azure control plane or for example, also Kubernetes clusters running in your own data center or at the edge or at other cloud providers. And then you can take advantage of the same Azure management experience uh, you have in Azure for your Kubernetes clusters and servers running in Azure. Think about policies, update management and monitoring. Now this is pretty cool. The other cool thing we're doing, and this is what we're gonna talk about in this video, is enabling Azure services outside of Azure. So this allows you to bring, for example, Azure Arc enabled data services like Azure SQL managed instance, um, or as in this case, we're gonna look at application services and run them in your local data center at your edge location or at another cloud provider. So you can keep building these cloud native applications and use the same architecture and the same um, services independent from the location you want to run your application. And again, what we announced today was actually the Azure application services. Now with Azure application services, we're talking about app service, functions, logic apps, API management, uh, and event grid. And we allow you to deploy these in your on-premises environment or even at other cloud providers. And so that is pretty cool. And so let's have a look how we actually can do that and how we actually deploy this. So here we are in the Azure portal. And for those who are not familiar with Azure Arc, I already opened Azure Arc in the Azure portal. And this is basically the Azure Arc center where everything comes together. And what you can see here on the left side, for example, is the menu. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. And you can see here we have the Arc enabled infrastructures. So I have servers and Kubernetes clusters. I can even connect Microsoft SQL servers um, to the Azure control plane and take advantage of security center and other recommendations there. Uh, you also see that, for example, Azure Stack HCI, our hyper-converse infrastructure solution is available there as well. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you can see here we have now a couple of Azure services you can leverage together with Azure Arc. Now, what do we need to do for actually enabling this? 
So what we need to um, deploy app services outside of the Azure infrastructure, we need some sort of a place, right? And so we created something called custom locations. And think about it as your own little Azure region in, in a sense that it's obviously not an Azure region, but it's when you deploy an application, instead of, for example, choosing an Azure region, you would then choose your custom applications, uh, locations. Now, what does that mean? Like, how do I actually build a custom uh, location? So for that, we actually need a Kubernetes cluster, and that one needs to be managed by Azure Arc enabled uh, Kubernetes clusters. So for example, here, I already have a couple of Kubernetes clusters here in my environment. Uh, these are all Kubernetes clusters, which are not running in Azure. They're running either at other cloud providers or in my personal local data center here at home. So I have one cluster here, um, which I want to quickly show you. And again, onboarding is super easy. It basically installs an agent as a container on your machine, um, as you're familiar with. And then you can obviously take advantage um, of the Azure management capabilities. As you can see here, it shows up as an Azure resource. This is one of the great things about Azure Arc. It actually builds this native Azure resource. Even the resources outside of Azure, it still gets the same management capabilities. So you can see here now I have an activity log. I have role-based access control. I can even extend this to my Kubernetes clusters as well. I, you can see here it's part of a resource group uh, and a subscription. And you can see here I can also leverage tagging. I get another lot of other cool stuff. For example, I can leverage Azure Monitor to actually monitor what's happening on my Kubernetes cluster here. Um, I can use logs and metrics and all that good stuff. I can deploy policies to make sure that my Kubernetes clusters and applications are compliant. And I can use a technology like GitOps to actually deploy containerized applications um, to my environment. So this can already, if you're building applications which are containerized running on Kubernetes, this can actually be already a very great solution. But what we want to have a look at is actually how you can deploy app services. So for that, we have something called extensions. And we now need to actually go out and deploy the application services extension here uh, on that Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. And it's pretty easy. So you just click on the add button here. Um, we then um, can choose what we want to run. In my case, I want to run the application services. This will allow me to basically run web apps and um, functions and all that good stuff. And then I can go in here and you can see here, it tells me, okay, I want to deploy that extension. So I click on create. And now I need to actually get that. And that actually helps me to create a, um, a script which I then can run against my environment. So first of all, it needs to be part of a subscription and a resource group, and it selects the ones obviously, uh, which are um, the ones for the Kubernetes cluster. And then I, I need to define an instance name. So let's call this app service Tom DC01. And then it allows me to quickly create a new custom location. So if you look at this, a custom location can be really a basically a place. Uh, and this can mean like it could be a data center, it could be a, a city, it could be a rack. You can even have multiple of these custom locations, obviously, um, in your data center in theory, uh, really depending on how many Kubernetes clusters you're actually going to use. So I'm going to create one. And this one I call Tom's data center zero one. So this is basically my little server here at home um, and my Kubernetes cluster here at home. Uh, it then asks me to basically go and define a load balancer and I need to configure the static IP of the cluster. So this is actually there to then deploy the application um, and use that for you for the app service part. So what I'm going to do here and you can see here this is a private IP address because this cluster is behind the firewall. This one is not running in the cloud. It's really uh, outside of Azure. Um, I can then also enable logs. So I, I want to do that for my um, uh, app service deployment. Again, you don't need to. This is an optional step, but I, I like to have actually these logs from that app service environment in my log analytics workspace. And then I can also obviously use tagging. I can assign tags later, but for now let's do um, 
assign that data center tag. So I already have one for Tom's home. And then at the end, we basically get that script here generated to onboard the Azure app service for Kubernetes with Azure Arc um, for functions and logic apps as well. And you can see here, I can just go and download that script and I could then run it uh, on my local machine in my Azure CLI, or I could, for example, also go and run it in my um, Azure Cloud Shell as well. Um, so in my case, I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna run this. So here I'm uh, basically my local terminal. Again, this could also be the Azure Cloud Shell. The only thing you need here is basically the Azure CLI pre-installed. Uh, I already did that. I also used AC login to basically log in as a, with my Azure account. And now I'm gonna just copy paste the script to actually uh, deploy these uh, app service extension to my Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. So you can see here the first command obviously selects the right subscription, make sure that everything is installed. And then um, the Azure CLI needs a couple of extensions here, which basically enable that to, to get basically the connection to the uh, Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so we are back um, here and we can see when the um, application service extension is now finally deployed to my Kubernetes cluster. I can go back here to my Kubernetes cluster. And if I go to extensions, you can actually see that I have now the app service extension added here and has the status installed, right? So I can now you start using app services such as web apps, logic apps, or functions, um, running locally in my local data center here or my local home office um, and as I would do in Azure. So let me quickly show you something else. We go back to the Azure center um, and we can see here all the different uh, resources again, but I want to show you is the custom locations. So now I have three custom locations here. Uh, you can see here I have the Tom's data center here one. That's the one we just created by actually adding the app service extension to my Kubernetes clusters, uh, to my Kubernetes cluster running directly here. Uh, I also have added a app service extension to a Kubernetes clusters cluster, which is running at another cloud provider, right? So I can also use that now to actually deploy Azure app services uh, directly to that cloud provider. So I'm gonna show you how that looks like. And so if I scroll down here, you can see here I have app services here available. I already did deploy one of my apps here. Uh, let's deploy a new one. And I'm gonna show you actually the magic here now, uh, what is happening. And again, I can use that also with ARM templates, the CLI, PowerShell, um, and so on, right? It's not just limited to the portal. So what I'm gonna select here, um, I need to obviously uh, create a resource group. So let's do test app two, because this is my second app I'm gonna add. And then before I actually enter the name here and, and select the runtime stack and stuff like that, I wanna show you actually what happened, what the magic now is. So if I select the region, I can now not just select a Nash region, but you can also see that my custom locations here uh, called other cloud provider zero one and Tom data center zero one, they show up in the list of Azure regions, right? So this is, this is very, very powerful because now I can use the same tooling, the same services, the same control plane uh, actually to deploy uh, services there. So I'm gonna select in this case now um, to also show you that my other cloud provider. So now um, I also give that a name. So let's call that test app two. Uh, and then I select the runtime stack. So let's select, uh, let's do .NET Core uh, here in this case. And you can see here again, I can select your operating system and stuff like that. Um, can then sort of go back further to monitoring. I could even uh, enable application insights for my application already. I can add some tags as I would do with any other web app. And then I can actually review um, that app. And then I would actually go and create this. Now, while it's creating, again, this takes a couple of uh, seconds usually to create the web app. Um, and now 
I really want to highlight this. This is not a web app now running in Azure. This is now a web app running at one of the other cloud providers. Uh, so you have now Azure Pass services um, at another cloud provider. So if I go to resource, you can now see here that I have. it actually looks like a web app, right? You get the activity logs, you get role based access control, you get all your settings here on the right side. I could now go out and obviously deploy my application to it. But I want to show you here is actually that it's deployed. So I can click here, copy the URL. Um, and then if I open this up here in the browser, you can see here I have my web app now running um, again outside of Azure, which I think is, is pretty, pretty cool. So this enables a couple of awesome things, right? Uh, before you really could create your applications and run them in Azure and at your cloud provider, but whenever you needed to basically go out and deploy it somewhere else than Azure, um, you had to figure out, okay, how do we actually create that application so it runs there? Or do we need to re-architect it? Do we not need Azure Pass services? Because again, they were not available on premises before, right? They were not available at other cloud providers before. Now with Azure Arc and Azure Arc enabled application services, we can now take the same application um, architecture and deploy it to various different places. So you can, you as a developer, IT Pro, you can still use the same tooling as you know to actually create and deploy your applications. And then you can, for example, use Azure Arc enabled infrastructure to manage your Linux, your Windows servers and your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, you can also go out and actually deploy to these. So if you have applications which are uh, containerized on top of Kubernetes clusters, you can actually use the Azure control plane and GitOps to deploy these applications. Um, but then you obviously also often want to actually take these higher level services. Like, so you want to build on past services, these cloud native um, applications. And with Azure Arc enabled application services, we provide you exactly that. So you can run web apps, logic apps, event grid, API management and functions um, wherever you need them to run. And obviously, in many, many cases, you also need databases. So you could obviously spin up your own SQL server, or you could use Azure Arc enabled data services, which allows you to bring Azure SQL managed instances into your data center, right? Or again, add another cloud provider. So you can build a web app, which uses like the Azure Pass services, like app services. And then in the backend, you can use a Azure SQL database and all that without running in Azure. So this is pretty cool. You can take the same architecture, the same services and run them wherever you need them. So I hope this gave you a quick overview about application services uh, together with Azure Arc and how you can actually deploy these on your Kubernetes clusters running on premises or at other cloud providers. If you liked that video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.